In this video, I'm gonna show you how to find your content SEO friendliness in five minutes. So you wrote a piece of content, included your keyword, and think that it's optimized for on-page SEO. And it might be, or it might not be. And that's where a tool can come in handy to make sure that you're checking off all the boxes. Specifically, you wanna make sure that Google can understand what your page is all about and what topics you're covering on the page. And in this video, I'll show you how to do that with ease. So let's get right into the exact steps. So your first step is to head over to the SEO writing assistant, which is under the content marketing section of SEMrush. And then there's two ways that you can basically import your content for this tool to analyze. One is you can just copy and paste the content into this box here. If you happen to have like a Google doc and you haven't published anything yet, or if the page is already live on the web, you can just import text from the web enter the URL and SEMrush will do the rest. So that's actually what I did here for the sake of speed. I imported a blog post from Backlinko and had this SEMrush tool analyze it by clicking import. And the first thing you'll see, which is pretty cool actually, it will suggest keywords that you might wanna rank for or that you're targeting. So in this case, it's a post about bounce rate, but I'm not just trying to rank for bounce rate. I would like to rank for a lot of these similar ones as well. But before you you know, have the tool analyze your page to see how well optimized it is for these keywords, you should review them because some of them may not be 100% relevant or they might be keywords that you don't want to target. So in this case, content pages is something that I really don't want to optimize around. Same thing with exit rate in Google Analytics. People don't really call it that. This one I would probably get rid of as well, but these are good ones. I would say all these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven are solid. So I'll click import keywords and then the recommendations will be based on those keywords because if you just enter you know, a piece of content like this without giving the tool keywords, it won't be able to understand, you know, what you're trying to optimize for. So it really can't identify whether it's optimized well for the target keywords unless you give it to them. So if none of the recommendations are relevant, or if you only want to target, let's say one specific keyword, it doesn't find it, you can easily enter them in the keyword sidebar here. So in this case, you wouldn't have anything here and you could enter a keyword like my target keyword, it could just analyze your content for that one singular keyword, which does, you know, in some cases does make sense. So once that's all good to go, you want to click the get recommendations button and the tool will get to work um, when it comes to analyzing your content. So this is what you'll see once the tool has finished analyzing your post and, and seeing how well optimized it is. So overall, you can see that this is eight out of 10, which is pretty good. And generally, you know, it's not about getting it to 10 out of 10 in, in a lot of cases, because if you get too much into the weeds with SEO, when it comes to on-page SEO, it can sometimes detract from the user experience. So it's always a balance here. And that's actually why SEMrush has features for readability, originality, and tone of voice, because three out of the four um, metrics when it comes to you know analyzing your content for on-page SEO really is about the user. And that's why I love this feature is because it doesn't just look at the keywords you use and things of that nature. It also looks at how good the content is when it comes to readability, originality, and tone of voice. So what you want to do is use these recommendations to figure out what you should do to improve your content. So if you think your content is pretty much where it needs to be from a user experience standpoint, then you might want to keep it the same. But for example, in terms of readability, the text is longer than most of the best performing competitors. This is a good piece of feedback. It's not necessarily you have to go in and delete a bunch of stuff. It's more something to consider because this relates directly to search intent. So let's say that everyone searching for bounce rate, how to reduce your bounce rate, etc., wants a short piece of content. They want something that's short and sweet and just tells them a few very simple steps. And you have this long piece that's not matching what the search intent is. On the other hand, maybe someone wants a longer piece of content. They want to really get into the weeds and understand what bounce rate is, how to reduce it, things like that. In this case, SEMrush might tell you the opposite, that the text is actually too short and you might want to consider expanding it. So this is something that's important to keep in mind. In this case, I might keep it the same. I might look more at the SERPs and see specifically how much shorter it is and you know where maybe I can cut some stuff out. But it's a good recommendation to sort of start with because content length is an important element of search intent and you want to make Make sure that you're producing content that gives searches what they want. A lot of it comes down to how long the content is and how in-depth it is. And sometimes people want really in-depth stuff and sometimes they want the opposite and you want to align with that. The other recommendations when it comes to you know SEO specifically is adding these recommended keywords to the page, which you can easily do in this editor. Actually, if you don't want to go back to your CMS, you can actually just edit it right here and then copy and paste this back in. Or if it's a Google Doc, copy and paste it back into Google Docs. And this shows you how many of the recommendations you've already hit versus the those that you need to add. Now, again, 
if these don't make sense for your audience, you don't have to add them, but some of them are really good and really insightful. For example, leave your site. I'm kind of surprised that it doesn't have this, but it makes sense that this would be a term that would be re related to bounce rate, right? Because the bounce rate is basically the amount of people that leave your site without clicking on anything. So the fact that I don't have this shows that maybe something's lacking in my content and I should really cover it or use this exact phrasing because that's the phrasing my audience is using when they search for this topic. Same thing with web page. Like someone lands on your web page. I'm using site, site, site over and over again, but it's actually to be more accurate about bounce rate, it's really a web page. Like they're landing on a web page and they're clicking back. It's not just a site. So technically this is another term that should probably be included. Same thing with site visitor and page load time. This is a whole topic that I may not have covered that your if your site loads slowly or the page loads slowly that can contribute to your bounce rate this is something that i should probably cover so these are really good recommendations for seo but also to make sure you're covering everything that needs to be covered when it comes to the topic itself which is more important than just including these keywords for the sake of, of including them so in the case of like highest bounce rate i probably wouldn't include that because i can't really see that fitting in but some of the others i thought were really insightful you can also look at all attribute issues which isn't as big of a deal if your images don't have an alt tag but it is helpful to put in and and there's a broken link and don't link to homepage if there are more relevant pages. This is a good recommendation. Now in this case, I'm linking to basically a tool and I'm saying here's the homepage of the tool. So it does make sense to link to the homepage, but they're right that in general, you do want to link to internal pages that are more specific. This is kind of an, a, a piece that's a bit unique because I'm linking to all these tools that I'm citing as opposed to like citing a statistic or saying this post is really helpful if you want to learn more about something. But yeah, that's basically it. This is a really helpful tool in my opinion because it doesn't just take SEO into account. It also looks at things like original originality and readability. So if you wanted to really drill down into readability and say, I want to make my content easy to understand. This one's fairly easy. The target 64 at 75, uh, which is good because again, this is like search intent. You want to make sure you're aligning your content with search intent and what people expect. Generally, you want your readability to be easy because everyone can understand it no matter where they're at. But for example, if you're you know targeting a, a technical B2B audience, you don't want it to be too easy because you need to be speaking to people how they look at that issue or that problem or that topic. And that can sometimes be a bit more technical. So that's why it's cool that you know compared to the top 10 competitors for that keyword as as opposed to this number in isolation doesn't really tell you a lot, but because Semrush actually analyzes the readability of the top 10 search results, you know what people are looking for when it comes to um, readability. Do they want something that's maybe a bit more technical, a bit easier to read? And again, you don't have to use all these recommendations, but they're really helpful jumping off points. So for example, consider using the active voice. Active voice is usually better than the passive voice when it comes to writing or rewrite hard to read sentences. Like this is all good stuff that you should keep in mind as your viewer content, something an editor would usually do, but this tool does it really well in my opinion. So when when it comes to optimizing your content for SEO, obviously start with the SEO tab in this tool, but also pay attention to some of the others as well and see if maybe there's ways you can improve your content from a readability or tone of voice perspective as well. So that's how to size up your content on page SEO. And I'll see you in the next video.